So have you ever heard someone say, a translation can't be inspired because, why, it's merely a translation, and there's bound to be mistakes in it. So, being biased in favor of the authorized King James Bible, we, of course, want to say a translation can be inspired, but can we? Do we have any examples of a translation being inspired? Well, let me give you my definition of inspired. Now, I've gotten this from many other guys, uh, Sam Gipp, a few others. Uh, here it is. Inspiration is when God tells you to write something, and you start off with a blank sheet of paper, and you write what he tells you. That's inspiration. Okay. Now, they'll use terms like God breathed and, and all that. I understand. Preservation is when the word of God is preserved carefully, when copies are made. Now, in Psalm 12, the words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. Next verse. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord. Thou shalt preserve them for ever excuse me preserve them from this generation forever now I believe that my King James Bible has preserved those if you want to claim that the King James translation was inspired through the act of it being preserved then I would not argue with you I believe it is the the preserved Word of God that was inspired uh, I just need you to understand that the translators consulted numerous manuscripts. They did not start with a blank sheet of paper. So uh, don't let that definition trip you up. A real good argument for the King James Bible being inspired can be found in 1 John chapter 2, verse 23. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. He that acknowledgeth the Son hath the Father also. Now you'll notice that the last half of that verse is in italics, the, the fancy slanted lettering. When the King James translators came across oh, a place where they needed to add a word, they put it in italics so you would know that they added it to the text. They were honest with you. Now sometimes when you translate a, word, uh, a whole sentence, you need to insert a verb or a word, or otherwise it just won't make any sense at all. You have to do that when you translate from one language to another. These new translations don't even bother to show you the words they've added and all their thought-for-thought -thought translations and so on and so on. Anytime you see yeah, italics in the King James, that is a sign of an honest translation. They are being honest with you. They want you to know they've done that so that you wouldn't think it's in the original text. Now, on this verse, when they got to this verse, it seemed to them like these words belonged there. But they didn't have a Greek copy of the manuscript that had them. But they stepped out on faith and put them in there. And then 200 years later, they found Greek manuscripts that had the second half of this verse. God preserved his word. Even the Geneva Bible that came out just a few years before the King James Bible, even it does not have the second half of this verse. Uh, the Geneva Bible was pretty good. It was the Puritan Bible. But uh, the King James was a, a definite improvement. Now, I believe that God preserved his word. I believe the King James is a preserved translation. But let's answer the question, can a translation be inspired? Yes, we have numerous examples. Genesis chapter 42, and Joseph said all these words to the brothers and accused them of being spies. And we found out that Joseph was speaking to them through an interpreter. Joseph is speaking Egyptian. Now, a question to those that think only the original documents can be inspired. Was Joseph speaking in Egyptian? Yes, he was. Did the servant of Joseph translate the Egyptian language into Hebrew for the brothers to understand? Yes, he did. Did this all get recorded in the original copy of Genesis? Well, yes, it did. Now, since you've already admitted that the originals were inspired, 
Doesn't this mean that the Egyptian words spoken by Joseph were inspired when they were recorded into Hebrew? So let's let's recap here. The words Joseph speaks in Egyptian are inspired. Yes. The interpreter working for Joseph translates the words into Hebrew, and that's inspired. Then, years later, Moses writing all this down for us in the original manuscript of Genesis, that was also inspired. It's a translation. Now here's one from the book of Acts. Acts chapter 21. Paul is getting ready to address a crowd. At the bottom of the verse, there he was made a great silence. He spake unto them in Hebrew tongue, saying... And then you start the next chapter of the book of Acts. So the first 21 verses in the next chapter, Acts 22, were spoken by Paul in Hebrew. And yet they were recorded for us in the original book of Acts. And the original book of Acts is written in Greek. So if you declare that the book of Acts is inspired, why here is a translation of Hebrew into Greek. And therefore that translation has to be inspired. So, was the original book of Acts inspired? Yes. Because you guys that claim the originals are inspired, well, here's a translation in the original. Therefore, it has to be inspired. A translation can be. Second uh, Timothy 3, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. So, we have just seen two translations that are inspired. Is there a third one? Yeah. It has God as the speaker. Now, let me set the stage here. Paul's getting ready to make his defense to King Agrippa. And he says, At midday, O king, I saw in the way a light from heaven above the brightness of the sun, shining round about me and them which journeyed with me. And when we were all fallen to the earth, I heard a voice speaking unto me and saying in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Now, he spoke in Hebrew. God speaks to Saul, which is called Paul, in Hebrew. And he's telling the king all the events that happened in Acts chapter 9. Well, all of that got written down in Greek. So, that's a translation of Hebrew into Greek, and that was inspired. All Are there numerous other places in the Bible? Yes, there are, where it is being inferred that a translation must be occurring. Uh, for example, Second Kings chapter 6. Here you have the king of Syria. He's having a conversation with his fellow Syrians. And they're complaining to each other. Now, what, what language do you think they're talking to each other in? Why, I'm willing to say they're probably talking to each other in Syrian. Yet it all gets recorded for us in Hebrew. And, of course, there's the famous account of uh, Pharaoh talking to Moses. I'm pretty sure that Pharaoh is going to be using Egyptian when he's addressing Moses. I don't think he's going to show Moses any courtesy here. I better use the Hebrew tongue for you and all that. No, so these are translations. And they're inspired. 